It all begins in the year 400 BC with Democritus. He said that if you take something and cut it in half enough times, you'll eventually end up with something that is uncuttable, or atomos, which is where the word atom comes from. This model was accepted for a while until Aristotle came up with his own theory, which is called Aristotle's earthly model. He said that all matter is based on four elements, earth, fire, air and water. And then for the next 2000 years or so, the whole idea of atomic models was forgotten, until the year 1803, when John Dalton came up with a new model of the atom, which he based on five factors. All matter is made up of atoms that are indestructible, all atoms in an element are identical, atoms of different elements have different properties, atoms of different elements can combine to form compounds, and atoms can't be created or destroyed, and when compounds decompose, the atoms remain unchanged. For example, when a molecule of H2O breaks down, you get two hydrogens and one oxygen. In 1897, J.J. Thomson proposes a new model of the atom, called the plum pudding model. He likens the atom to a plum pudding, where the plums represent the electrons, which he called at the time corpuscles, and the dough, or the rest of the atom, represents a ball of positive charge. Clearly, the atom is mostly composed of empty space. There is no mention of protons or neutrons. And this takes us to 1911, when Ernest Rutherford came up with his nuclear model of the atom. He theorised that the positive charge of an atom was concentrated in the nucleus. He conducted his famous gold foil experiment to confirm this. He got a thin sheet of gold, and placed an alpha source at one end, and surrounded the whole thing with detectors. He fired the alpha particles. Some went straight through, some deflected at various angles, and some bounced right back. From this he concluded that the atom is mostly empty space. There must be a positive charge causing the positively charged alpha particles to deflect and bounce back, and finally concluded that the positive charge must be concentrated in the centre, which makes sense, since protons are in the nucleus. But it didn't stop there. In 1913, Niels Bohr came up with the planetary model of the atom. He said that electrons are not randomly arranged. They are found in shells orbiting the nucleus. He said that each shell contains a set number of electrons, and that each shell has a fixed energy, and electrons can move between shells. When they do move, they will either emit or absorb electromagnetic radiation. When an electron moves to a lower energy level, it emits electromagnetic radiation, and when it moves to a higher energy level, it absorbs electromagnetic radiation. And the current model of the atom was proposed by Erwin Schrödinger, and this is the quantum model. He said that it's impossible to know with certainty the exact location and momentum of electrons. So we know that there are electrons in the atom, but we can never be sure exactly where they are. This is because electrons aren't neatly arranged in shells. The arrangement of electrons can only be described in terms of probabilities. This is where he introduced orbitals which are basically regions of space where electrons are likely to be found. More on this later. So, say we have an atom like this, at any one point, all the electrons in the atom can be found here, or here, or here, or spaced out. And because you can have this strange arrangement of electrons, this model is often called the cloud model. Dalton described atoms as indivisible particles. He said that all atoms within an element are the same, and that different elements are made up of different atoms. He described atoms as a cloud of positive charge, with negatively charged electrons randomly arranged in it. He called this the plum pudding model. Rutherford and his colleagues fired alpha particles at a thin sheet of gold foil. Most of these particles went straight through the foil, which suggested that the atom was mostly empty space. Some deflected at various angles, and some bounced back completely, suggesting that there was a positively charged centre where most of the mass is concentrated, and this is the nucleus. 